we got another one for YouTube. You already know we got another one for YouTube. Uh, the Tournament Guidebook by Vishnu Warrior. You already know, guys. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. That's how you know when we um, go live. Make sure your notifications are on. You can get uh, you can get um, all the all the updates. So today we're actually looking at uh, one tempo, right? One tempo, but in a way, of course, it's really kind of one direction in a way, or choosing a direction is what that means here. But at the same time here, we're looking at one tempo. One tempo actually makes a big difference in everything, in fact, in chess. Um, so now let's check this out. All right, cool. First things first. Okay, let's go here, and I'm going to pull up um, what it says from Tournament Guidebook. I'm pulling up right now what it says from Tournament Guidebook, right? So um, let me see. Okay, perfect. So what it says. What we're looking at today, one tempo is all it takes to win or allow your opponent to escape. That's all it takes. One tempo. Now, first off, before we get and keep going, somebody tell me what tempo means. Tempo in chess. What is the tempo? What is the tempo? Somebody tell me what the tempo is. One tempo equals two moves. I mean, I ain't never heard that. I ain't never heard that. So I was trying to be like, I mean, yeah, but like, I ain't never heard that one. One tempo equals two moves. Tempo equals time. Correct. And we will say that. Tempo equals time. Okay. And what else, guys? What else we got? What else we got? What do you think a tempo is in your in your own words? It's funny. Tempo is time bought by an attack at any point in the game. Very nice. When your opponent has to waste time saving a piece. That can be a tempo. Yes, correct. But that is a very, very specific thing. A full tempo is when white and black moves. Attacking, pressure. On the front foot, I like it. Attack aggression, okay? Yes, tempo equals time. Tempi equals more time. More time, right? Or, of course, multiple tempos, which is tempi for, for plural there, right? Tempo equals time. Extra move in a way, right? I like to always think of it. Yes, it is time, but my favorite way to think of a tempo is getting extra time to do something. So if I attack you, if I attack your queen, your queen has to move. It doesn't have to, but if you move your queen, then I get an extra move to do something else. As opposed to if I didn't attack your queen, then you would have an extra move to counter what I just did, right? So it makes a lot of a lot of sense. But now, with that being said, tempo or tempi. Thanks for the follow, Danilo. Danilo. Okay, cool. So today we're looking at one tempo. That's all it takes. Sometimes let me go back to it again. Pushing your will, forcing your opponent's moves. Nice, Danilo. Again, right here from uh, Tournament Guidebook, the book is dropping. One tempo is all it takes to win or allow your opponent to escape allow your opponent to escape all right here we go so uh white play d4 c5 knight of three d6 okay we got a knight orf d d4 snap snap knight of six knight c3 a6 i'm a fan of the knight orf i like knight orf sicilians of course i play honestly i'm pretty versatile in sicilian i can play many sicilians in fact celebrated dragon especially call dirty harry um sometimes a dragon not really i'm not a fan of it anymore and also um and also, uh, Nidorf, obviously, right? Nidorf. Yeah, so Nidorf's fun. Nidorf's really fun, obviously. So after A6, nice, uh, not, sorry, after A6, there was A4. A4 here, which is a different way of stopping B5, right? So B5 is, uh, is real. B5 is a real thing. It happens all the time. And B5 is going to happen. We already know this, right? So he plays A4, which is sort of, if we flip the board here, all you Nidorf players, this is sort of a sideline in a way. What you're used to as a knight or player, if you do play f3, bishop e3, souls in with bishop c4, g3 variations, right? Bishop, uh, even bishop e2, which is more of the traditional classical castling, not having black any problems, uh, stuff like that. So with that being said, um, you know, th this is knight or uh, city, h3, g3, b3, you know, these are all uh, unorthodox things you can do. a4, though. Is definitely not one that you face a lot. But going back to it, uh, we're looking at it from Black's point of view, right? After knight to c6, okay? After knight c6, um, bishop e2, okay? After bishop e2, there's g6. So we're not going to get to the certain part until move 20. So we're going to move through a lot of stuff here. Uh, so thanks for the follow smash x. After g6, bishop e3, bishop g7. Let's flip the board again. I like to look at it from both sides here because I actually, and I don't play this way as white with the Sicilian. But against in the knight or stuff, or like any positions you might face like this, you may you may want to see how they do it or how they play stuff. So bishop g7 here. I mean, it's it's pretty equal, pretty equal to say the least. 
Castle Castle. Now in these positions, honestly, white can, you know, black, black is okay. Black is okay and black can get in trouble. After f4, f5, stuff like that, pawn takes h4, h5 can happen as well. Moving the knight around, playing c4, c5. Black has play on the c file, bishop d7, and play on the c file. Even playing a dragon fashion with bishop d7, taking, playing bishop c6, and knight to d7. Many things you can do there. With that being said, let's flip the board, look at it again. Boom. Okay, f4, bishop d7. f4 is a very aggressive way of playing. I like playing this as well. And after knight to b3, bishop e6. Flipping the board again here, right? The knight moved from d4, stopping e6. So, yeah, you already know, Igor big facts. So after knight b3, bishop e6. After bishop e6, there's g4. g4, which is really strong, really crazy looking. G4 here, like out of all the moves, G4, the man went very aggressive. Now we're not on the one tempo part yet because there's a lot going on. G4 is natural. You will see this, but usually you see G4 when the king is castled on the other side, right? So uh, when, the queen, when the king is castled onto the queen side, then it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different there. Someone said, Lee Chester ain't saying, played it, Chester combat. No, I mean, it's, it, it, it's a matter of opinion, probably. And maybe you have to do some studies there, Bobby. Um, you play this type of knight off? Not really. Bishop b6 is ugly. It is ugly, but if you think about the Maroxy bind setups with the bit pawn on c4, bishop b6 is actually really good. It actually really good. You can take on b3 as well. Doesn't that break principle? No. Nah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. In fact, if you flip the board here, right, this bishop doesn't have many squares to go to. You can go d7, which probably is recommended, but it's passive. Very passive. Very passive. Rook c8 happens. And now you do have an f5, which many of y'all are trying to play right here. Many of y'all trying to play. And after f5, okay, after f5, you can go maybe bishop takes b3 or g takes f5. This is scary. This is already scary right now. You know, you, you usually don't want this to happen. If you do, you got to know how to play as, as black here. But let's go back, right? Rook c8, flip the board. This is still not where we want to be at. Gotcha, thanks. No problem, Kwame. Principle is good, but it's not everything. Right. right. It's, it's a combination of many things. After rook c8, we have g5. G5 hits the knight immediately, and then knight d7, and okay, chat, it's on you. What you thinking? What you thinking here, chat? What would you do? Now, this still ain't the one tempo part. This is not where we want to spend our time at yet. Not just yet. Not just yet. It's a few more moves. We're going to really get to the, the part of today's analysis, which is one tempo or one direction or one decision, right? Uh, what would you do? White to move, chat, what you thinking? I try not to castle versus Cecilia. I saw Van Foris just move the king to f1 to push the h pawn, and that's how it's been working well for me. Now, Grantix, you do want to remember and keep this in mind that it will not be the same situation for everything. So you shouldn't always look to not castle versus the Cecilia, because you can get in trouble very quickly, especially as you get stronger, and uh, you have to start adapting more. You can get in a lot of trouble. But that is something to remember. That just doesn't mean don't do it every single time. f5. f5. I see f5. I see f5 again. I like h4. h4 I like too. But f5 is definitely a monster move. And after f5 happens, right? Instead of taking on f5, which looks crazy, because it is. Yo, death by lactose. Thanks for the five. Thanks for the Twitch Prime, bro. Yo, death by lactose. Thanks for the five. Appreciate it. After f5, bishop takes b3. Thanks for the follow Hades. Takes on b3 and knight c5. Okay. Cool. Right? It's still not, we still not on the tempo part just yet. We are still not on the tempo part just yet. Okay? White to move. All right, chat, you got some choices. What would you do in this position? Many of y'all gonna go wrong. It happens. That's okay. That's why we're doing this analysis. White to move. What do you do? Knight c5 on the board. You got knight d5 from a dot. What's up, Vibronic? My guy. Bishop takes c5, b4, pawn. Okay. Bishop takes c5. We have knight d5, b4, bishop g4 from DJ Bobby Hill. Bitty bitty. Thanks, bro. Bishop c4. Let's try to be aggressive. I like the bishop c4 option. In fact, problem I think is uh, knight a5, which is going to be really annoying. Or e5, trying to chop that bishop as fast as it got there, big fella. Omario on. You know, thanks for the follow. Queen d5 from ice. Yeah, you got it. You careful. You you like leading with your face, right? You know, you ever try to like block a punch? If you ever got into a fight or you've seen somebody fight, maybe a boxing match, right? You ever seen somebody lead with their face, right? 
that probably isn't smart. And queen d5 is like leading with your absolute face. Like you just want them to like this. Your queen does not belong here at all. The furthest away from this square your queen should be. At least not leading with the queen. Like not just don't lead with. The be careful, my guy. <laughs> the Nate Robinson approach. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yo, Padrami said the Nate Robinson approach. Stop right now. Right now. Lead with your chin, you in the bin. Ooh, Vibronics, that was fire. Thanks for the six months, my guy. Appreciate it too. F6 in the mix. Okay, I like it. Jeff O, my guy. Talk about blocking with your face. Jeff O is world champion of Muay Thai. Right? Block with your face if you want to, big fella. F6 is a move. Right? Okay. Queen C2. Nice C5. So here's the move. In fact, someone said it, and it was Bishop G4. Bishop G4, in fact, there were other moves here as well. But Bishop G4 is very nice. Bishop G4 for discovered attack on the rook when the pawn move up. Very nice. That's right, Omaria. That's right. Bishop G4 with F6 being a thing, also capturing on G6. That's right. DJ Nails, what's up, bro? So rook B8, okay? Then knight D5 happens, exposing B2, right? But we don't even care. In fact, we don't even. I would even let you take this. I could even probably go King H1. I'm not going to, but it's the fact that this is uh, this is going to be very weak. I have two bishops as compensation. And if you do end up taking this, the problem here for you is your dark squares are absolutely non-existent for me or for you. Now, for me, oh, yeah, we're about to turn up and have a ball. It's a party over here, right? It's a party. And we got to get this bishop over here somehow, right? Pawn takes maybe a thing, F6, or even trying to get the bishop. Somehow getting this going, that's going to take a while. That could be a real thing, though. Could be a real thing right but black is down two tempi now because he moved the rook twice i mean but yeah also i mean you have to think about you know uh, white moving pawns many times it, it, mo pushing pawns waste tempi sometimes right but if you think about this right i play f4 not really wasting a tempi but it didn't threaten anything knight b3 right g4 g5 f5 right so you know tempi and, and tempi wise i didn't if you look at let's flip the board development wise in fact black is ahead on development weirdly enough uh, not by a lot, right? Not by a lot, but slightly ahead on development. I'm, I'm first to the file, right? The bishop's very open. The queen can get out very quickly. The knights are on great squares. And you still have to move both of these. So white's actually down slightly on development, but at the cost of compensation-wise, having a king side attack, which I had to, in a way, waste time, meaning pawn moves to actually do this. Um, but white is definitely has the, uh, the compensation for it. Now, if this backfires, it's a rapster because you mean you didn't open up the front door of your house and all the doors open and it's looking crazy right now. So after Bishop G4, Rook B8, Knight D5, A5 happens, right? Okay. And then here we go. Here go the first little move here. We haven't got to the move in a minute. We're actually going to get to it right after this. There's two more moves and then we're going to get into today's really the deep part of today's analysis, which is the one tempo or one decision is what another uh, alternative uh, title for today based off the thumbnail are you thinking about queenie one at one some at some point maybe if you go for the um the grand prix setup but if you go queenie one and you go queen h4 how do you like what's your next plan right now i guess maybe you do have a plan rook f3 rook h3 hitting h7 and then h5 happens but then you take and it kind of blocks if h7 bishop can go to f6 you could go to b2 you go h7 king g7 queen h6 yeah yeah, that, that could work. That's still, I'm, I'm pretty sure that could work. I'm pretty sure that could work. Jeffo with the five. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Jeffo with the five. Bro, thanks for the five piece and the biscuit. Shout out to Jeffo. Thanks, bro. Came for the, we can't wait for the thumbnail. Yeah, it's coming out. Make sure y'all on the YouTube for that. Thumbnail's coming out. Thanks for the follow, Turtles. Welcome to the stream. So back to this, guys. A5 happens. All right, chat. Everyone in the chat, if you are listening and you have some choices today, it is on you. It is white to move. What would you do in this position? We have not reached the one tempo part yet. Probably have maybe later on uh, or earlier in the game. But really just a part we really want to focus on here is how deep the tempo is and what happens if you, uh, you don't do it correctly, right? Again, one tempo is all it takes to win or allow your opponent to escape. Literally, well, that's it. One tempo. In a way, one move. But definitely one tempo, to be specific, is all it takes for your for uh for you to win or to allow your opponent to get up out of there we got f6 f6 mr r thanks for the follow f6 for kicks vibronics is on it my guy f6 is right you guys are right f6 is very nice all right now after e takes okay 
we take with the g pawn and bishop at h8 okay stop where you at right now this is where the one tempo starts this is exactly what we're talking about right here now believe it or not okay there are some ways you're supposed to go here now let me read this real quick this is from Vishnu Warriors book, right? We're going to put it. We're going to read this straight from the book. So when you guys cop a, a version of the book, a copy of the book, you'll be able to see this again and be like, oh, that's what they were talking about. This material is not for you to watch or to read one time. This is for you to read and watch multiple times, many, many times. Repetition, not just chess, outside of chess, in every sport or every uh, aspect of life. If you want to get good at anything, it takes repetition lots of times. So here's from the book right here. It says the following position is taken from Perfect Your Chess by Grandmaster Andre Bolikatin, which is who's playing white right now, Bolikatin. So he's playing right now, and this is actually from his book, his game. Here, his notes given, it says, given the apparently exposed position of the white king. Think about this. Let me read that one more time. Given the apparently exposed position of white's king. So look at the exposed position, right? Pawns. Where are your pawns supposed to go when you castle, right? I always like to tell students, especially beginners, when you castle, you think about it as like locking your house, right? Go to bed, lock the doors, everything, windows, everything locked, right? Okay, whatever. You know, it, with that being said, you know, hey, if you push these, that's like, you know, opening the doors and the windows and letting anything and everything come inside and you don't care. And that's exactly what's going on with White's King. It's super exposed. If you trade these bishops, then the more pieces you trade, the more exposed the king becomes. So with that being said, given the apparently exposed position of the white king, opening the center appears horrible. So making a move like e5, I mean, just appears to be absolutely horrible because it's just going to open up lines more for the exposed king. But in this particular situation, right, it is only it is the only practical decision. Any delay would be would prove fatal since even one tempo will allow black to consolidate his position. Someone tell me in the chat what does consolidate means. In chess terms, what do, what, what do you mean by consolidate? So let me read that sentence again. In this particular position, it is the only practical decision. Any delay would prove fatal since even one tempo will allow black to consolidate his position, right? Let's get back to the chat. It says, Bring it together, strengthen pawns, concentrate your forces, constants, consolidate, get more solid. All of you are correct, right? Consolidate, making sure peace, everything's solid. I'm not hanging anything. Things are good to go, right? I have no problems. Organize the forces, correct. Correct. Chemistry, reinforcement, very nice, very nice. Right, all right, finishing up what it says. Any delay, will, any, any delay would prove fatal since even one tempo will allow black to consolidate his position. By exploiting the overload of the knight in the pawn, which must control the e7 square, white succeeds in breaking through. And then it goes on to say the move is white to move. What do you do, chat? It's on you. One tempo, right? And if you get this wrong, you're going to let black consolidate. So let's see what the chat has. We got bishop takes c5. We got knight e7. We got knight e7 check, okay? What you got? Vishnu says consolidate equals... Coordinate pieces that are the longer term advantage you have neutralizes the short term advantage of the opponent. Consolidate fortification. Consolidate, fortify, block everything you say. <laughs> you suck to your opponent. Ben, uh, ben Rats Country, you're crazy. What book did Canty say this was book? Oh, it's coming out, Kwame72. It hasn't dropped yet, but we're dropping videos ahead of time. So when a book does drop, you know, we'll, you'll have the link to it in the video. Queen of three is a progressive move to me. Bishop h5 and he's dead. That didn't even rhyme. Phantom Master Landry didn't even rhyme. Queen f3. Okay, we got a queen f3 here. So let's see if queen f3. Let's try this. Okay, I go rook e8. What would you do? What would you do here? We're just going to play around here. We're just going to play around until somebody finds the move or, you know, somebody mentions it. In fact, somebody did mention the move here, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet until we, we kind of look through this. What would you play next? Bishop takes c5. Okay, takes. D takes C5. What's next? Thanks for the follow, Raga Moon. Okay, you still like Queen E1? Oh, no, Queen's not after. Rook C1, Rook A to E1. Okay. Okay, Bishop G5. You can even go Bishop G5. Jeff O. Hey, 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 Jeff. Hold on, Big Jeff. Big Jeff. 
Or don't hurt yourself, big fella. Mr. G part, Rick A to D1. Rick A to D1, okay. Rick A D1, uh, night before, right. And, you know, okay, we can say that you're still doing well, but are you crushing? Are you mating me? I'm starting to consolidate. I am starting to consolidate right now. He said before I take the night. <laughs> before I take the night. Oh, Bishop G5. So he's saying Bishop G5 right here. Jeffo said Bishop G5. That's face blockage, 100% premium. Cambodian, that's not a move, big fellow. Wow. Jeez, Knight takes E4 for the score. Hit that man with a move. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And he thought he was doing good. And he thought he was winning. Right? Jeez. Bishop H5. Okay, Bishop H5. That's cute. That's cute. That's not, in fact, it actually is a good move. If it takes, there's like all kind of nasty threats. But I'm not going to take it. I'm just going to play something else. Knight B4, Knight D4. In fact, right now, the engine says everything's equal. Believe it or not. Equal right now. Pure <laughs> face box. Come on, Vibronic. Let him know. All right. Lady Laos, right. Bishop H5, though. I just put, in fact, Angel likes Knight B4. I like this move. Because it just puts the Knights in the center. And it, it forces you to do something. Right. Queen G2 is fine. Queen G3, I take on E4. As a human, this ain't looking the best. Like, this is strange now. It's very strange. It doesn't work. So after takes, takes. All right. Bishop H8, we have 97. Okay. Somebody said 97. Let's try that. Takes, takes. Okay. Queen takes. What you doing next? What's the next move, Kwame? Like 97, what you doing next? Bit right here, Bishop H6. Okay, cute. Okay, Bishop H6. Nice. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yo, and it don't work. It don't work. It don't do nothing, bro. I just move my rook out the way. And now I'm looking at you real hard. Staring at you real hard, bro. And for your next move. Oh, by the way. Your king out here in the middle of the street still. Your king out here in the middle of the street still. Still, big fella. Yeah, Nikki says start with queen d4. Okay, let's run it back. You said queen d4. Let's run it back. Okay, here um, takes bishop h8. So you mean like what, 97 or queen d4 right now? When is queen d4 happening? Yeah, Nikki. You do have to be careful. This is a family channel. You can't be doing stuff like that here. Oh, right now? Oh, no, Kid Nikki. Yo, yay. I told you this was a family channel, right? Okay, you can't do that. You can't do that kind of stuff here right now. All right? All right, we're going to put that back. We're going to put that back. Everything is okay. Right? I hope you're okay. If you need some, let us know. If you need somebody to talk to. We got people for you. We got people for you. Because that, that ain't going to work around here. Then 97? Okay, so you're talking about queen takes, then 97 right here. Ah, okay, I see you. I see you, right? Okay, look at that. Jeez, look at that. Take him. I don't care nothing about him. Right? Takes that one. Right? Then I move the rook out the way. And in fact, this is defended. Thanks for the piece. That was cute, though. That was nice. Okay. All right, looking at the tactics. And then they're looking at you like you crazy. Queen d4, though, is a clever move. Try to get some, some material, but it's not made. That is not made. I take this one. I move my rook. Everything's defended. Everything's defended. She got the queen. Yeah, but now look at the piece count, right? I mean, yeah, it ain't checkmate, but I got his queen, though. I got his queen. All right, how much material you got? Four pieces versus one, two, three, four, five. Five pieces. I'm up a piece. Very simple math here and very simple chess from the from the end of the game is now is now all about trading. All about trading. Any four follows less than the bluff, right? I didn't see the bishop. Yeah, that's okay. This, this stuff's not easy. So after bishop h8, all right, somebody said it. It was only one person that said it. And in fact, Phantom Master Klinjic found it here as well. e5. e5. Wow. The only move in a way that speeds up what we're trying to do. And it's also counterintuitive due to my king being ridiculous here. One tempo. That's all it takes, right? Here, oh, this move actually really does something. Now, the other ones do too as well. 97. This is a move. But E, you know, it has to be a good tempo. Like, you know, uh, tempo, yes, you will gain some time. Like B4, oh, B4, that's a tempo, right? That's good, but that's garbage. Straight garbo. That's not a move. What is B4? That's nothing. It doesn't work ever. So, but it is a tempo. So you have to be careful on, you know, with the tempo, you do have it. But you have to see what tempi I have and what is the follow-up due to calculation. I know it's E5. You know it's E5? Okay, cool. So after E5... You got to have the right follow-up as well. 97, 
right? Bishop takes c5. These are all tempi, but e5 is what was chosen. Okay, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, right? Now, after the e5 move, we have a few moves. Let's see what happens. On d takes, pretty obvious, knight hangs. Come on, big fella. Come on now. Can you show why bishop takes c5 is incorrect? In fact, yes, bishop takes c5. I just take it. And then what's your follow-up? What is your follow-up? Immediately, I have knight d4, and you never can actually get in here. As weird as that is, it doesn't, like, you need to get the queen to h6, which it may not be enough time for that. But let's see. Knight e7 check. Okay, knight e7, knight takes. And if queen takes, I take with the f rook. And then takes, and then rook e8. Straight. And then I'm out of here. You know? No, we can't get up. Uh, or rook on f takes, very cool. Yeah, f rook takes, yeah. Pretty cool, but, you know, this doesn't work. He wanted that to work, you know, obviously, but could get it to work. So, you know, that's why he played e5 here. Now, if pawn takes, pretty obvious. Bishop takes c5. But if knight takes, that's not, this is not the most obvious. Maybe it is for some of you. A lot of you, it's not obvious. So now what do you do? If knight takes e5, what's the move, chat? Some of you will find it instantly. Some of you won't find it at all. That's okay here. It's okay. Look around the board. What do we find? Elevation with 97 check. 97 from Lerp. That's right. Okay, now 97. Very, very good. Very, very good. 97, 97, 97. That's right, 97 hitting. 97 check. Very nice. So, E5, this pawn is actually untouchable. What a tempo. Also threatening stuff like maybe even E6 in there as well. That's nuts. So after E5, boom, Rook E8 happens, attacking E5. Now I'm going to take it with the Rook and maybe even 97 now. But after Rook E8, okay, chat, it's on you. What would you do now? What would you do now? 97, that's a dang good move here. Give check with the Knight. 97. Right now, Danilo, E6, and he's living in the sticks. Why you to move, chat? What you going to do here? Krista DeGen, thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, think about this one, chat. Think about it. Don't just jump at the first move you see. You need to do some calculation. Because if you jump at the first move you see here, when you're playing your own games, what do you tend to do? You jump as soon as you see it. You know. Yeah, I can probably, well, I won't catch anything. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the follow. Alain, 13948. Bitch takes C5, D takes C5, E6. E6, E6, E6. We got a lot of E6ers here. In fact, move number one, chat. You are correct. Chat always wins, right? Chat is always right. E6 is the first move on the edge. E6 is move number one. Now let's see what happens. Let's see if you're really following along here, chat. Pawn takes pretty obvi. F7, oh my goodness. Get the man off the board. But, okay, we have rook takes. That's obvious too. But if knight takes, this isn't the most obvious. What would you play here? C6 can happen, but if he takes with a knight, now he's looking at you like, what you gonna do? And, okay. And thanks, bro. Like, what, what you got here? What do you have? E6 is actually the best move. And I understand why Andre did not go for E6 here, because it's not very clear. It is clear, but it's not clear? Strange. But what would you do here, right? E6 happens. And then what do you do? Knight X E7. Well, you can't X nothing, but you can play 97. Wow, Jeffo found it. That's it. It should be six, Jeffo. Okay, big fella. Look at you swinging out here. He's swinging, y'all. He's swinging. He's swinging. And then if queen d7, in fact, the best move here from the bishop, from the bishop, from the engine says rook c1. Rook c1, which is hard to see, bro. Rook c1 is ridiculous. Like, I would not be thinking rook c1 at all in this position. Very tough position. e6, as a human, this doesn't seem... It feels like I lost some of my advantage. As white here... I do feel like I have slightly lost the advantage. But in fact, the engine's like, no, nah, you fine. It's plus two. Plus two and a half, something like that. But it doesn't feel like that. It's just kind of strange. It's kind of strange. I didn't like the feeling there. But um, what's a good feeling here is after Rook E8, Rook E8, here's the move. Utterly amazing. Thanks for the follow. You already know elevation. Let's get it, my guy. On takes D6. He takes on D6. He takes on D6 and says, go ahead and take this. I dare you. I dare you to take this bishop. He takes the bishop. Oh shoot. Right. Now of course you're just gonna take it back. Let's just take the take the take it right back. 
pretty easy. And now bishop takes f6, and black is kind of out of the woods. But there is some technique involved. We're up in exchange. Is white to move, chat? You can finish this out. What do you do? White to move. Then we go fast forward a little bit because there's a lot of moves left, actually. A lot of moves left, actually. So we got past the tempo part. Now we need to convert. We need to convert. So how do we convert? How do we convert, chat? What is the conversion? Thinking that, yeah. This is where I fall apart. This is usually, this is always the hardest part. I would say the hardest game to win is a game you're winning. I forgot what said that. One, one GM said that. Queen d5 from elevation. Bishop f2. Bishop f3, he meant. He says queen e1 or something. Okay. Queen e1. I mean, needs to be some better. d7. d7 is right here. Pushed the pawn. It could be a possibility. But it becomes weaker as you push it further. And your, your queen, your rooks aren't connected just yet. Knight f5 looks kind of scary. That does. But, I mean, again, your pieces are on the back rank. Only pieces not on the back rank is knight and bishop. It's not enough yet. Knight d5. I like that move. I do. Rook c1. Rook takes f6. You need a good follow up. Right? Again, you have to remember that your pieces are on the back rank. So any piece, any move that you make like d7, your piece is still on the back rank. Knight d5. Guess what's still on the back rank? Right? Like rook takes f6. Okay, cool. You got rid of one. But guess what's still on the back rank? Like, so you haven't developed. You know, development is always a number one thing here. Oh, wait. So, in fact, the move here is queen to d5, which is a beautiful move. Engine says best moves here are queen d5, queen f3, and knight c4, which nobody's playing knight c4. Nobody is playing knight c4. Are you serious? Bruh. Bro, knight c4? No, bro. Why would you play knight c4? Like, it, yeah, there's so many other moves you can make. There's so many other moves you can make here, right? Knight c4, maybe knight d5 would even be better. Knight c4 feels like you're losing. Like, again, right, we talk about the tempo and time. Knight c4 kind of gives him some time back. Queen d5, he has to respond, hitting the knight. Knight d5, hitting the bishop. These are responsive moves, making him do something. Queen f3. Carl, good to see you. What's up? F2 said it looks pretty good, yep. Yeah, knight c4, but, you know, what's your follow-up, right? You're just defending the pawn and defending b2. So you went defensive when you have offensive moves first. And in fact, the best defense is offense, not a defense. The best defense is offense. So if I'm trying to defend something, well, first, can I attack something to defend what I'm doing? Very strong, different way of thinking. That's a Jedi code number uh, 8022. I was going to say nice four and then delete it. It's all good. All right. So here we are. After bishop takes f6, queen d5, bishop d4. Okay, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Rook f3, defending e3, also threatening to hitting with the dub one time. Hitting with the dub. Queen h4, and now, okay, back on you, chat. Look a little dangerous. You, It looks a little dangerous. In fact, what do you do in this position? I'm not even going to tell you what black is threatening. Let's see if you're paying attention. It is your move. What do you do, chat? What are you doing? Queen takes f7, queen takes f7, queen takes f7, queen takes f7, it's unanimous, queen takes f7, it is, in fact, move number one is king h1, <laughs> well, let's get them silent emotes in the chat, let's get the silence in the chat for the silent king h1, bro, the silent king h1 is move number one, this is move number one on the engine, right, oh, that's so funny. And then move number two, in fact, is queen takes f7. Queen takes f7. Queen takes f7, check king h8. And you still have to go here anyway. So there was really kind of, and there actually, not that there's no difference, but I think he probably felt safer here saying, you know what? I know this is a check and you're going to go here anyway, but I feel safer with my queen right here than going here right now due to black's pieces. Honestly, queen takes f7 was a move, but he opted for king h1. Then knight d3, I mean, this is wild. There's like, look at this cluster of pieces right here. I mean, it feels like you just drew, you're drawing some type of shape. Like, what is this? Look how all these pieces connected. Even this one, it's like some type of shape. Like, that's crazy. But all of them are like connected in some weird way. And all this stuff is going on. You need to analyze correctly because if you don't, you lose. Geek guy, what's up, bro? Welcome to the stream. Anu Rag, thanks for the follow. And after knight d3, now we take on f7. 
King H8, and all right, chat, it's on you. Can you finish this out, or you know, you're gonna lose? What do you do? Knight G2, where is that? Oh, here, Knight G2, threatening Queen Takes. Queen Takes is coming. We have Rook F1, which Rook? You have two of them. Rook H3 from Undermined. H3, you know what? Man, shoot, Rook H3, man, you know what? That's that's nice, huh? Okay. All right, Rook H3. Garbage blocked with his whole face. Oh my goodness. Bruh. Jeez, gets a man off the board. Knight F2, what does he do? Knight F2, what does he do? Man, King G2, give me everything. I appreciate the generosity, my guy. Wow. Doesn't work. Looks great, though. Doesn't work. Try again. Try again. Rick A, Rick A to F1. Okay, Rick A to F1 actually is a move. It is. It's a slower way of playing. It's a slower way. That's okay. <laughs> undermined. <laughs> Try again, though. Under, undermined. Try another move. Rick A3 does not work. Try another move. Wait, could Queen capture the Knight? What you mean? After Rick H3? Or what? It's not 50, 50. Oh, you said never mind? Okay. Pawn to D7. Fan to chess. Pa pass pawns must be pushed. D7. That's right. Finally, y'all got it. Fan, fan to chess. Greg Lars and Jeffo have got it correct. It's D7. Pass pawns must be pushed. Now I have Queen E8 as a threat. Threatening to take the Rook and maybe even Queen E. Now, of course, he has that covered right now. So you do have to be aware of this. This is covered. But D7 allows me to have now promotion tactics and tricks knight d to e5 on you chat there is a fork which a lot of y'all even missed because it's like there's so much going on you can't even see that right wait what if black captures the knight if black captures the knight so you mean after d7 right here after bishop takes e3 i mean you can just play queen e8 queen e8 is game over queen e8 is gg if king g7 you play rick f7 king here i can take this now takes you literally have no moves. You can play G5, but that's just you looking gross out here. You look absolutely disgusting if you play G5. Let's see. G5, Queen E6 is mate. Game over. So, taking the knight literally loses on the absolute spot. After bishop takes Queen E8. In fact, let me see what the engine says. Queen E8 says it is mate in 17. <laughs> after bishop takes E3. After bishop takes E3. Yeah, it's mate in 17 after that. Thanks for the prime. Undermined, bro. Thanks for the prime, bro. Yo, thanks for that, man. J. Sustan Beer. Thanks for the follow. And thanks for the prime. Undermined. So D7, right? D7, 95. Right? 95, forking, queen, and rook. This is very temporary, though, as we have a move, and it's white to move. Chat, what do you do? What do you do? We hit. We don't, we, 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 we getting forked here. It's a fork going on. We got to get out of it, obviously. Chris, the Dejin says Queen E8. Xanax with Queen E8 check. Well, you guys are right. You guys are right. Flex real hard there. King G7. And the reason why Knight's here is because now Rook F7 is not a thing anymore. Not a thing anymore. Very strong here. Now, let's see how strong you really are, chat. Why to move? Let's see how strong you really are here. Queen E8, he didn't take the rook. I mean, this is a nuts position to ever be in. There you go, Phantom Master Clinic. Exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. Bimo Heroes to H5. Bimo is H5, okay. So it is white to move, chat. What do you do? We got some checks. The queen's on E8 already. Didn't you know? You take on B8. We got any checks. I mean, it's a hard move to find, honestly. Because you don't even have a legit... Not that you don't have a legit, but like... What's the follow-up, bro? This is crazy. Rick H5, no fork now? Nope. I'm back. What did I miss? We're on the uh, the ending parts of the game here. Here's what White played. This one is like crazy. This man played Rook H3. And this is this is uh, engine move number one, too. Thanks for the follow, Kane. So, like, number one engine move is Rook H3. That's nuts. Nuts, bro. Rook H3. Then Queen G5, and now you have to, like, man, he found engine move number one, two again. <laughs> like, this guy was dumb strong, bro. <laughs> this guy was stupid strong. What is going on right now? I mean, y'all, I don't, I don't think any of y'all gonna find this next move. This is white to move chat. What do you think it is? I mean, this is insane. 
Oof, boy, I know he had a lot of time to think about this. When you think about these kind of games, and when you see the move that he makes here, makes you think about how much time he had to think about this move. To make a move this strong, and it's the number one engine move, which I highly think he had a lot of time to think. And he used his time wisely to find this. This is nuts. Undermine says knight at five, deck by death by lactose says knight at five. We got some knight at five checks. Rick F1. Queen takes B8 for promotion. Well, Queen takes B8, uh, utterly is a 100% face blockage. That's not a move. We got stretchers to your address on file sent to you. Um, because, the, you know, this is a wrap. Like, you're trying to queen, but that's a wrap. Start, start a new one. So, that don't work, my guy. So, you can't take those. But, Rick G1 and he's done. Okay, I like that. I like that. Phantom Mass Clutcher. Here's Knight at 5. Okay. Oh, Knight at 5. All right. Ooh, okay. 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 Clap it up, chat. Clap it up. You're garbage. You're garbage. It doesn't work. Knight at 5 is not a move. And after takes, hey, what do you do next? What do you do next? Now, you're not garbage, guys, of course. But what do you do? What do you do next? It actually is a very tempting move. But what would you do next, right? Let's just see why it doesn't work. And then we're going to see what does. Knight at five, right? I take it. I'm like, cool. You're going to give me a knight? I'm going to take a knight. What are we going to do now? So we have rook eight seven. Wow. Okay. Rook eight seven. Okay. I see you all here. Right. So think about this. You have sacked the knight. Then you sacked the rook. Okay. So let me, I'm going to take this off off your hands. Looks like you don't need that. Appreciate the generosity, my guy. And for your next move, what do you do next? What do you do next? Oh, okay. It's probably a resi. It's probably a resi. Probably a hard resi there. Resi is in resignation. Get the man off the board, please. Thank you very much. So, that doesn't work. Knight at five is not live. That is not a move, big fella. Don't do it to yourself. In fact, this is the hardest move. No one said it. And I don't blame you, bro. Like, this is a hard move to play. Look away, so yeah. Right here. Here it is. I mean, this is nuts. This is really nuts. Like, Still trying to figure out, you know, I know what he's doing, but also just for him to find this move really is dumb strong. It's just stupid strong. Because I see the idea immediately after he makes it. I see the idea immediately. But it was just, oh man. Like, it was wonderful. Here's what he played. He played Bishop F3. What the heck is that? Wow. Wow. I mean, so simple, so ridiculous looking, but it's so strong all at the same time. Bishop F3, right? It looks ridiculous, but the whole idea is just bring the rook to G1. Bring the rook to G1, bro. Very easy, very simple. Very, very simple. Silent, right, silent Bishop F3. Cyberslav was good. All right, so let's look at a few lines here. Now, from what was played was Knight D3, which is very strange. Very strange. I mean, I guess it's not very strange. It is threatening mate in one move. This was the game move was knight d3 threatening mate. Threatening mate. But let's see what happens on a few options, right? For instance, first choice. What if he takes the bishop? Okay. Rick takes f3 threatening rick f7. Again, it's really kind of nothing to do. In fact, engine gives best move is queen e7. After takes takes. Wow. So this is just winning. This is just going into a winning end game for real, for real. Because you're about to go rook f8. You can't stop the queen. If knight c6. And I'm up in exchange. You got to think about that too. I forgot. We're actually up in exchange. So this is like winning in all areas. So knight takes f3 doesn't work. We really don't have many other moves too. Look and think about that. What else does black do? Can't take the queen. You have to shuffle back and forth with these pieces. This is not check and it doesn't work. The only thing you can do is really like bishop e3. So that makes sense why you played knight d3. How about bishop takes knight? Okay. All right, chat. Well, it's on you. It's on you. What if queen takes the knight? We're going to look at that in a minute, actually. Uh, bishop takes, what would you do, chat? That's a good question. We're going to look at queen takes in a minute. What you got, chat? Bishop takes e3. Finish it out. Finish it out smoothly. We got rook g1 and queen takes b8. Wow, chess camp. Dang, you just blocked your whole face, rook. I mean, this is a family channel, man. You can't be doing that. Sheesh, my guy. Sheesh. 
Way to go out. Jumped off the deep end. He jumped. Yeah, he jumped. He jumped, y'all. He jumped. Rick G1 is not a move. Right? No, yeah. Rick E1. Bishop takes C6. That's right. There it is. Phantom Mask Ledger got it. And Oro, too. And Chris. Chris the digit. Bishop takes C6. Bam. If pawn takes, I take the rook. Come on, big fella. Right? So if the knight takes, you take on E3, and that's for me. I mean, this game is over. We ain't even got to look at no more moves. Right? I'm out the queen. Your king looking crazy. I'm up in exchange. I mean, come on now. Let me just stop talking about that. So that's a wrap. So after bishop f3, okay, queen takes. That was one thing that was in the chat. Well, chat, can you find this combo? Can you find this combo? Have you done your tactics today? Did you do your puzzle rush? This to tell you right now. This to tell you if you've done your puzzle rush or not. Let's go. White to move. White to move. And you better get this right because actually there's only one winning move, which is so crazy here. There's only one winning move. Let's see if you can find it, chat. Only one winning move. Some donut from Berlin says bishop takes c6. Bishop to d5. Bishop g2. Bishop takes c6. I didn't get to type my answer fast enough. Okay, and rook takes h7. Okay. Take the rook and queen, it says Otterly. Perfect. Otterly Amazing has the right answer. In fact, it's queen takes b8 and queenie. But let's look at the other ones. If bishop takes c6, actually a draw after queen takes h3. Now, of course, they, I say draw, but it's equal due to what's about to happen next. Your bishop's hanging, right? I mean, this could get nuts, right? Like, what if you take this, right? Take on b8, and then knight takes c6. This is insane right now. This is insane, because if you try to queen, oh, let me just queen. Oh, I got two queens. <laughs> Mate, wow. Get off the board, man. Just get off the board. Get off the board. They just, just get off the board, bro. So it's very, very gross here. There's a lot of tactics going on. You have to be careful that you don't get made it. So bishop takes c6 does not work. Thanks for the follow. Yes, uh, you seen on TV. Thank you. Bishop takes c6 doesn't work. Tough one. Very, very tough. Rook takes h7 doesn't work because king takes and then and then and they ask, can you okay cool in your follow up, sir? In your follow up, sir? In your follow up, and you just like I don't have one. You don't got nothing. A few checks, maybe. That's it. This rook out the game. You're not queening. I got that on lockster. Lock. Even if you do take. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. In fact, I don't even have to take that. I, says, I forgot this is mate once again. Pretty, pretty tough. Pretty tough. After bishop f3, there was knight to d3. Threatening knight f2 mate. Knight f2 mate. White played knight g4. Defending f2. H5. Man, this is a. What a game, right? What a game. At a moment's notice somebody's getting made it we don't know who it was like more white than black but somebody's getting made it the best defense is offense here here's the move bam bishop takes c6 this can get wild let's take a look at some lines if queen takes g4 hitting the rook we take on d3 and we kind of laugh we're about to queen you have no good checks no mate i'm good if pawn takes we have the same thing rook takes everything's defended if pawn takes you can take on d4. Checks are gone. Winning again. Winning once again. So after h5, bishop takes, he takes on, he takes with the b pawn. B takes c6. Um, and then white plays rook f3 here. So this makes total sense. Trying to go rook f7, that's mate. Queen d5. Okay. And all right, chat, it's on you. Let's finish this out strong. It's like a five, four or five moves here. One, two, three, four, five, six moves left. My mind is tax. I gotta go make a uh, falafel salad. Man, game is true. All right, elevation. I'm gonna see you on the next one, bro. You uh may check the YouTube too, you know, when this drops. We're about to finish this game out though. Queen d5, rook f1 from chess cam. Beautiful. That's correct. Just double your, your rook's pinned. Double it. Knight f2 check. Right? Feel like you blundered, huh? Feel like you just blundered here. Oh snap, I didn't even see that check. <gasps> yeah, who've been there before? Oh snap, bro. Dang. I didn't even see that check, bro. Knight f2, what do you do? I didn't even see that check, bro. All day. Yeah. All right. I do that every I'm there every move. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even see that, bro. Dang. King g2. King g2. And believe it or not, King g2 is a draw. King g2 is a draw because h takes g4. And now I'm threatening mate. Which means now you're going to have to hit me with a perpet one time. 
Pet by perpet, I mean perpetual. You don't have anything. Cleaning? Oh, that's cute. Okay, mate. Wait, it's not mate. King G1, mate. Thank you very much. Stop talking. All right, mate. <clears throat> so, King G2 doesn't work. So you have to take with the rook. 100% correct, correct, chat. Rook takes F2. Bishop takes F2. And it's on you, chat. Can you finish this out? Can you finish this out? In fact, there's only three moves left. White wins in three moves from this position. What are those moves? Sugihara G, thanks for the follow. What's up? Queen E7. Queen E7 from Greg, LJ. Both say Queen E7. Knight takes, yikes, Jan. That's going to be, that's going to hurt a little bit. You might still be winning. But that's going to hurt a little bit. That's going to sting on the way out, Mike. It's going to sting. The move is Queen E7, chat. Queen E7. King H8 forced. I mean, not really. Oh, actually, it is. Because if you went King G8, I had Knight of 6 mating on H7. So he went King H8. Okay, chat. And for your next move, chat. Queen E7, Queen H7. Wow. You know what? Queen H7, I like it, I guess. You're threatening Knight F6 check and taking, but we're still down a piece. I guess we get our piece back. Maybe. Maybe it's equal. Maybe you're fine. Two queens equals one. Yeah. Queen F6, Queen F6, Knight F6. You guys are right. It's Queen F6, actually. Queen F6. Okay, now if King G8, there's like a mating technique, and also you can take on G6. Pretty easy. But King H7 was the last move, and then White played one more move, and White and Black resigned. What is that move, chat? What is that move here? Resign right here. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. What do you have? Knight H6, we have Queen F7, Queen E7, Queen F7. You guys are right. Queen F7s? You're right. Queen F7. Let's look at the few lines. Obviously, right. If a uh, queen takes, rook takes, and then king h8, and then you can play knight f6. Nice. <laughs> Box the man in. Get him out of here, right? That's a wrap. So after rook takes, if king g8, knight h6, king here, and then we up a piece. Pretty easy. We go here and here, if we can, in enough time. But we're up a piece. We're up a piece. Thanks for the follow. Dez two up. So after rook takes, um, yeah, that's a move. Queen check is one. Queen check, bro. Uh, oh, I had it at the end. Yeah, well, uh, we're still here. We're still here. We, we're looking at it. Queen f7. Queen f7 happened after, uh, well, after queen f7, black resigned right there. But just looking at the line, right? We looked at what happens on queen takes or king takes. Actually, king h8. King h8 is, uh, is a move as well. King h8, you have queen f6. This is where, you know, it could be some problems as well. King h7, queen f7, queen takes, rook takes, king here, king g8, runs into knight h6, taking once again. And then after queen f7, if um, king h8, there is a queen e8, I think. You could also just take this too. Queen takes d5, knight takes f2. This is probably simple, taking on f2. All right, but he resigned right here after queen f7 the guy resigned so he could have went many routes from there we just kind of playing around after that but this was about that tempo or tempi so hopefully you learned something today about the tempo or tempi and plural using them knowing when to use them and also taking risks while doing them so i hope you all uh, enjoyed today's video hit the subscribe button and hit the follows and all that other stuff and i'm gonna see you guys on the next video